good afternoon, everybody. I just wanted to say uh, welcome back to our Wonder Dogs. They, uh, they make us so proud. Uh, we've won two national championships in Division I, and this is one of them uh, from 2008. And it's a great honor to have these guys back with their families. Uh, they exemplify for Fresno State the excellence that we're striving for each and every day. And I want to thank them. I want to thank the families who are here and all the fans. And on behalf of Steve Robertello and I, we're so excited about Coach Basil and his team here today. And hopefully this will inspire them to do even better in the days and years to come. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Wonder Dogs. We're proud of you. Go Dogs! It wasn't just the fact that they won the national championship. It was the way that they did it, putting their teammates in front of themselves, in some cases even sacrificing their potential pro careers. And that ultimate moment was something none of us will ever forget. Your presence here today is testament to that. And you may not recognize each and every one of these guys who are back today, so I want to make sure to give them a proper introduction. First of all, we have a gentleman back with the program this year who was a part of that magic in 2008. He was the first base coach on that national championship team, and he's on the coaching staff again this year. Pat Ware. Also from that coaching staff who couldn't be with us today, but also played big roles, Matt Curtis, former Bulldog catcher, now on the staff at USC. And the pitching coach from that club, Mike May. There are also a few players who couldn't be with us today because uh, they're busy playing baseball, like Justin Wilson, and I hope you caught his message to the fan base yesterday. He gave us that same line he gave ESPN in Omaha. Remember, we're not Cinderella, we're Bulldogs, and they proved that there in Omaha. Also still playing professionally, Justin Miller and Danny Muno. Gene Eschat is the strength coach in the Orioles system. He couldn't be here today and unable to join us because they were too far away on business today. Holden Sprague, an awesome reliever. Trent Soares, who played some outfield for that team. Brandon Burke, who threw the last pitch in Omaha. And Alan Amati, who right now is in Omaha. He lives there now. But let's move on to the gentlemen who are here today. And we get to see 10 years later. Let's start out with a guy who had an incredible escape act on the mound at Arizona State then started the series opener in that championship series against Georgia. He stayed in our community, works for Provident Payments with his wife, Megan, and two wonder pups, Sean Bobsteel. You might remember this gentleman if you're paying attention. He came in as a pinch runner in Omaha and was on base at the same time as his high school teammate who had a pretty memorable series. He's now a counselor at his alma mater, Turlock High School. He and his wife, Kayla, have two sons and a daughter. Please welcome Blake Amador. One of the scariest, most vicious off-speed pitches in school history. And he got the win against North Carolina and Omaha when he got their all-time hits leader, Chad Flack, for the last out. He's here today with his wife Angie and their twin boys. He now works for a hospital in Southern California as their supply chain director, and he looks like he could still play. Jason Breckley. You guys have seen Gordon Beckham in the big leagues. Well, this next guy got Gordon Beckham and Rich Poitras, Georgia's top two hitters, back to back in that championship series. Here today with his wife, Nicole. He's a project manager for a construction company in the Bay Area and a volunteer pitching coach for the Gators of San Francisco State. I know you all remember Jake Flothy. This next man uh, might have sold you a house or worked with the real estate agent who did here in town. He and his uh, wife, Laura Beth, have a son, Harvey, and he caught all nine innings of the championship game against Georgia. Give it up for Danny Grubb. I think one of my favorite moments from Omaha was that second game of the championship series against Georgia, a 19-10 Bulldog win. Maybe you guys remember that was the game where this young man got his first career save, going three scoreless innings to close it out, allowing just one hit. Now he has a commercial real estate firm in Hanford, Jake Howard. Woo! 
This next guy was one of the best stories of 2008. He was an underdog turned wonder dog, and it was his parents who came up with that moniker. His grand slam at Arizona State, man was that amazing. Now has a wife, Janelle, and two daughters. He works for Colony North Star Equity in Southern California. Gavin Edstrom. Another catcher from that Bulldog team is here today with his wife, Ashley, and their son and daughter. He's a senior technician for at and And he had a pinch hit single in that 19-10 win over Georgia and Omaha. Jake Johnson. Two years before he led the nation in home runs, he gave us a taste of his power in Omaha as a Bulldog freshman. In the very first game, he went deep against Rice, then he did it again in the first game of the championship series against Georgia. He and his wife Jenny have a son and a daughter. They're both in their Wonder Pup t-shirts today. Now he's in real estate here in the Valley. The one and only Jordan Rivera. This next guy was more than just a black guy and the weirdest haircut you've ever seen. When he came in against North Carolina and Omaha, their three, four, and five hitters were coming up. The Tar Heels had runners at first and third and nobody out. And not a single Tar Heel scored because of the magical pitching of the only lefty in that bullpen, Chris Tomlinson. And how about his high school teammate who's fighting fires here at the Fresno Fire Department now. He met his wife Lexi at Fresno State when she was playing volleyball for the Bulldogs. They have two children also. And the dogs wouldn't have made it out of the regionals if he didn't have that masterful gem against San Diego. And then against North Carolina with a spot in the championship series on the line. A six inning performance, leaving his shoulder on the mound in Omaha. Clayton Allison. If you guys are here every game, you see this gentleman every game. He is in his sixth season as an assistant coach on the staff, handling the pitchers this year. He had a home run, a memorable one, in Omaha against North Carolina. Ryan Overland. I don't know where to start with the next guy, one of the greatest second basemen in Fresno State history. The play from Omaha that stands out the most was just an unbelievable defensive play to Rob Kyle Seeger of North Carolina. You guys remember Eric Wetzel turning a pirouette and getting him out at first? Eric Wetzel's here today. He and his wife Kristen have two daughters and one of them is here right with him today. There you go. Up next. <laughs> Sugar Bear, Wetzel, while you work, on cue, huh, eh, boy? This gentleman, I'm glad we're doing this today because he leaves next week to play more professional baseball for the Fargo Red Hawks in the American Association. He set a college World Series record with four home runs and was the most outstanding player in Omaha. You saw those outstanding defensive plays. Aren't you guys glad to see Tom Mendoza here today? Come here, Tom. Come here. You want everybody to sing you happy birthday? No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. What's your number one memory from 10 years ago? Winning it. There's no doubt about that. How often do you think about it now? Uh, every night before I go to sleep. Every night. <laughs> You'll definitely think about it tonight. Tom Mendoza, most outstanding player. He wasn't a senior on that team. This next guy was. And his decision to come back for that senior year is such a crucial development for the dogs. With his wife, Kelsey, they have a son and a daughter. He's an engineer at DPR Construction in Southern California. You remember his sliding catch to send the dogs to Omaha when he grabbed that ball in Tempe, Arizona. He's your career doubles leader, finished his career atop the RBI list too. He's got that lumberjack beard today. Steve Sustor. Come on up, Steve. Hey, what did 2008 teach you? Uh, it was just a great experience, you know, a, a team full of guys, everybody playing to the best they possibly could. Um, we walk out of that with a championship and lifelong friendships. Uh, it, was, it was a great experience. Everyone loved it. Did everybody love Steve Sustor? 
I thought so. Thanks for being here today. All right, there's two more members of this team who I haven't introduced yet. Let me look around and make sure I'm not missing anybody else. This next guy named his son Easton. Maybe you guys can figure that out with the bats the Bulldogs used in Omaha. He's married to Emma. He's the head baseball coach at San Rafael High School as alma mater and also in sales for Protect Cargo. And in the last game of the 2008 series, he was four for four with two home runs, drove in all six Bulldog runs, and caught the final out and stuck that baseball in his pocket. The one and only Rhino, Steve Detweiler. Let's go, Rhino. You ever reach back in your pocket and see if the ball's still there? Oh, you know, I do it from time to time. And, oh, wait. I'm glad I got out today. I'm back out here for you guys. Has anyone ever tried to break into your house and snag that? You know, only about four times. But no, 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 no. This thing's got a nice safe home. Dad did a great job building me a nice little trophy case. So, thank you, Paul. I love it. And 10 years ago, in a post-game news conference, when they asked you about your big game, you said, oh, I didn't do anything, it was all my teammates. Brandon Burke had to shove that box score in your face and say, dude, you drove in all six runs. Are you proud of what you did yet? Yeah, you know, Justin Wilson threw a great game that day. And, you know, he got, uh, you know, shut down a great Georgia team. So, it was, uh, you know, Justin did a great job, and Danny did a great job calling the game right there. He still got it, doesn't he? He's still following the rules. Well... Anything else that you want all these fans or your teammates or uh, your coach Mike Bansell to know? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've held on to this ball for about 10 years, and I think it's about time where it actually finds its uh, final resting place. And uh, Mike Bansell, where's Bates at? Bates around here? Where's Bates at? Right behind you. I'd like to be able to give this to you as a thank you for giving me an opportunity and changing my life. Now. Yet again, a story that's too good to be true from the 2008 National Champions, and that is your coach then, and still your coach now, the one and only Mike Basil. Let's hear it, folks. How do you feel about these underdogs to underdogs who changed Fresno State baseball and changed our valley?